Hello everybody, this is Arderamus again. Just wanted to share some revisions to my source code from my original uh, tutorial video for uh, Visual Basic Game Programming. In this one what I've done is uh, made it so the character is uh, static in the center screen more uh, like the traditional RPG games like Dragon Warrior, Final Fantasy, and whatnot. Uh, I haven't added in the smooth uh, scrolling yet, but I intend to do that later on, uh, along with some other things like adding a wall collision and whatnot. I wanted to work on some experiments that I was uh, um, thinking about trying out here. Uh, anyway, if you don't have the original game source, I added a code uh, right here, a little hyperlink, so you can grab that. Um, I also have a hyperlink, which I'll stick in the video here, um, to the latest update revision. So, anyways, uh, as you can see here, I have all of the original graphics set up. Um, what I've added is some map variables and uh, I just recently added this as well essentially a third dimension to my map array so this is our X coordinate and our Y coordinates that we loop through and draw our tiles with um, I'm using this third one to as a test uh, to store things like whether a tile would be blocked or passable or if I wanted to put like an NPC or some other graphic on top of the map thought it'd be interesting to use that um, you wouldn't want to loop through all three of these, like do a X loop, Y loop, and a Z loop, uh, because that would really uh, start to bog down your program. It kind of grows exponentially. Uh, let's see here. So basically I'm storing my map X and map Y, which will correspond to these coordinates. This is the actual map size, by the way, so this is going to be 100 tiles up by 100 tiles across. So what is that, 10,000? That's a pretty big map, but really you could make it as big as you wanted with this method. Uh, you're only going to be drawing a portion of it at a time. Um, as you can see here in my key down event, uh, I'm no longer moving the guy around. Instead, I'm actually physically moving the map. So just incrementing and decrementing the values for my x and y coordinates based upon the keys that you hit. Pretty simple. Um, down to my uh, form load, same stuff as before. Initialize your graphics. This is my tile palette, same as uh, from the first tutorial. This is new here. What I've done here is just <clears throat> add in some start coordinates for the guy. So, uh, you know, he starts out on 2020. Now remember these these uh, positions are what we'd call logical. They're not real physical coordinates. I mean the guy's physical coordinates are never going to actually change. He's going to be on like you know x5, y5. Uh, so we create these artificial coordinates for him and we'll have to make him aware of those later on. I haven't done that yet. Um, this little piece just fills in. Uh, it's just a loop to fill all of the coordinates with a zero value which I would correspond to a grass tile or something like that so you could set your default terrain with this be pretty handy if you uh, had a map editor so you wouldn't have to click 10,000 tiles and add you know whatever you wanted and you just automatically fill it up with a default terrain these are just random um, map coordinates that I put some things I think I have uh, mountains and trees so where it sees a 2 it'll be a mountain and where it sees a 1 it'll be so I could add more of those in if I wanted. You'll see here when I run it uh, my draw all routine very similar to before drawing my physical coordinates um, but what I'm gonna do instead of uh, updating my rectangles based upon these coordinates I'm gonna update them based upon my artificial coordinates and make them correspond to the X coordinate. Um, and what I've done is created a sub 
before grabbing whichever uh, source rectangle we want so we're not just stuck like in the original tutorial I had you know just statically set s rec to a specific tile and you can't do that otherwise you're always gonna get the same one so what I've done if we want to jump down here to see what I do here I send it some parameters my x coordinate and my y coordinate the width and the height so 50 pixels by 50 pixels and, and then I just stuff this static zero in there because my terrain tiles are always going to be on the zero coordinate because I'm not looping through Z just X and Y and I can use those uh, in different ways so I'm just going to leave that at zero zero is always going to have my tile so here I've basically said you know if there's a zero value stuff grass in it one stuff a tree in it and each one of these coordinates for the rectangle corresponds with one of the tiles. So uh, 0 to 50, you know, 50 to 50. And uh, so we'll see those in action here in a minute. Um, this is the same from the original tutorial, just drawing the destination rectangle. Always draw your tiles first you don't want them to appear over any other objects on your map. Um, what I've done here also is add a draw string to show you <coughs> uh, the actual difference between uh, our literal X and Y versus our map X and Y. And then same as the original tutorial, source rectangle um, for your guy. This is just drawing your dude. Uh, I went ahead and threw a nameplate in there because some a lot of RPGs, you know, especially online ones, you'll have your nameplate above your head. Uh, so this just draws the string. I called him Rad Marvin just for giggles, and I put that just slightly offset from my character's actual position here, as you can see, uh, t ten pixels off. Um, and then, same as the original tutorial. Uh, dump your graphics back buffer to the screen and rock and roll. So let's take a look at it real quick here. Hey, look at that. And if I move around, you'll see my guy stays right in the center of the screen on the literal coordinates. He's really not aware of his environment yet, so I, I can't block his movement across trees and things like that. Um, but I can move around pretty well. And ultimately, I'd want this to smoothly scroll. You know, you know, don't want to just jump 50 pixels every time. Uh, so, one thing I will show you before we kill this is our coordinates. And if you check this out, you'll see these are our physical coordinates, our x, y that it loops through, zero to six, and. Uh, that's what our guy is on. He's looking at the physical coordinates. That's why he never moves. And somehow we have to make him aware of these logical coordinates. Now this is an array, mind you, so if we go all the way to the edge of the map, it's going to crash. And the reason why is because we have gone outside of the array. We tried to go to negative uh, 1 and so on. Um, but the array only goes up to 100, as we saw before. And if we went off to the right, we'd go to 101 again, we'd crash it. So what you want to do is put some sort of looping on the edge of your map. And, you know, as we all know, these maps aren't round, they're square, so, or rectangular. Um, you know, when you get to the edge of the map, you're probably, probably going to want to see a mirror of the other side when you to make it look like you're um, going around the world so to speak uh, it's all kinds of things you could do with that uh, you could block it and if you didn't want to loop around the world but uh, we kind of like them to be seamless you know so basically when you hit a certain coordinate like uh, three or whatever it just jump you back to 98 or 97 something like that um, so that's where I'm at now. I've got a lot of things I want to try uh, implementing next uh, as time permits.
we'll try to get to that. Um, so I'll go ahead and once again I'll post the link to the source code for this particular update and you can monkey around with that all you like and try implementing your own stuff. Uh, changing your guy's name or you can even put in your own tile maps and stuff so whatever you want to do. Have fun. I'll catch you guys later. Bye bye.